This Masters Preview Edition of the Sports Gambling Podcast is presented by WinBet. Get started today and you'll get a risk free bet up to $500. Terms and conditions apply. Get the details over at WYNNBet.com and download the app today. We're also brought to you by Better Than Vegas. Better Than Vegas is your home to free daily video picks from SGPN. It's like YouTube for sports gambling. Make sure to subscribe to our profile at sports gambling podcast.com slash BTV. That's sports gambling podcast.com slash BTV. We're also brought to you by Odds Crowd. Odds Crowd has a ton of free fantasy betting contests, including a 2K season long MLB contest and a $500 weekly contest. Download their app today over at sports gambling podcast.com slash odds. That's sports gambling podcast.com slash odds. We're also brought to you by Pixwise. Pixwise has free picks every day for every sport. Check out all their expert plays and betting news at pixwise.com. That's pixwise.com. We're also giving away $500 in our Masters DFS contest that is completely free to enter. Just go to sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash masters. That's sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash masters. Ooh, welcome everyone to the sports gambling podcast. I'm Sean stacking the money green with my partner in picks, Ryan, real money Kramer. What's happening? Kramer dog. Uh, I it, no bullshit. It feels really, it's nice over here by myself. I do. <laughs> I, I'm enjoying the space. I'm enjoying Get a little elbow room. No uh, Colby dance. Oh, we, we debut the studio in the middle of March madness, yes. which is peak Colby dance season mm. peak pick Dundee. And so it's just you know it's it's just been a little lopsided. So I'm I'm happy to be by myself. Uh, I I hilariously and I'm I went to the wide shot so everyone can see. Yes, we got dressed we are both. up. <laughs> this is uh this is not something we planned. No. Kramer and I both, <laughs> without consulting each other, brought in red golf polos for us uh. to change into. <laughs> For the Masters yeah. podcast, I wish you we were making this up, but no, we totally. <laughs> That's the best part is neither of us were wearing it to to start yeah, the no, day. No, no, I wasn't gonna <laughs> rock it the entire day, and uh, well, no, I was wearing my white Sixers shirt. Yeah. It looks a little odd on camera, and then I I was looking in my closet. I said, "Oh, I, I'll I'll rock a golf polo." Oh, wait, why not a red golf polo? Why not in honor of Tiger Woods? Rest in peace. RIP Tiger Woods. He's alive and well, uh, taking care of business. Well, we we got so much to do. We are going to be joined by the Golf Gambling Podcast uh, co-host Steve Shermer and Boston Capper. It's a baby fucking wheel, man. A four man weave. I feel four like man we, weave. We could be playing talking golf, talking uh, golf masters. We got a little bit of a uh, housekeeping to take care of. First off, Ryan, fire up the oh, tout let me, machine let me, because let me, let me ISO on you here. Because what a run, March Madness! I of course finished sixteen and fifteen against the spread on the March Madness locks. Kramer nipping at my heels, fourteen and six, or wait, fifteen and fifteen and six against Sounds the spread. Right, yes. No, well, whatever. We dominated. That's all. That's all you need to know. I was two back of you, whatever it was. We, yes. I was one back going into the championship. Oh, so fourteen and seven. Yeah, I famously got the championship game wrong. Fourteen and seven, but we, we also dominated the odds shark bets over bracket contest. Coming in first place, our team came in first place, and we went twenty and eleven with our locks over there. We got a seven hundred fifty dollar uh, Amazon gift card. So uh, we want to get some crazy shit for the studio. Tweet us at Gambling Podcast. What kind of crazy shit uh, we should put in the studio? We already have the bar coming. It's getting installed Saturday. It will be ready to go come a Sunday for the Masters. And Ryan, we were also we ran our own March Madness bracket contest. Congratulations to Alan Cooley coming in first place, winning a nice one. Thousand dollars. So, congrats, Alan. If you're listening to this podcast, hit me up. Uh, we'll get you paid. What Sh- else, Sean? He's gonna need that because he he blew an opportunity. <laughs> yes, he the, did. I mean, come on. Well, he blew it. I also blew the odds crowd contest. Ugh. I was in first for most of the contest. Ended up getting in second. Tough, tough. The the guy uh, in second. He hit the side total and money line in the championship game. He won. He got five thousand. I only got twenty five hundred. Still a pretty good run and. Again, I will point out. I saw that he was on the under. I could have put three units on the under and just blocked him, yeah. and uh, could have taken home the money. But the gambling gods oh. don't like that kind of pussy footing around. I don't so think I sucked too- it up like a man. I didn't play the total because I didn't feel great about it. But I let I let him have a chance, 
And uh, you I was let punched. him have a chance. And look, I mean, the, I'm sure fans of this program, specifically staying in the the golf genre, yes, Tin Cup, right? The man was stubborn. He wasn't going to change <laughs> the opportunity, and he wanted to prove a point. But uh, Sean, look, it, it is golf season, and I I do. I was sad because major college sports is now over, mm. and uh, the well, Ryan, NFL. Ryan is <laughs> Ryan is on this kick where he calls FCS football not <laughs> major sports because he's on an 0 11 and one against the spread record. So we are we are going to be doing an, an FCS podcast mostly just to hear Ryan's picks. Uh, so you guys, I mean, I can't remember. Um, this is the greatest stretch of all time. Th- this is the worst stretch of all time. I think that we've ever is this had DiMaggio, on the uh, 56 <laughs> games. This is Ted Williams, the opposite of Ted Williams. That is, that is Kramer right now. So we're going to, we're going to be doing FCS tomorrow. Uh, oh. oh, there we go. <laughs> we get a little masters music while we shout out the presenting sponsor win bet baby. Thinking of getting in on the Masters action? Oh, they got the Masters. They got NBA. They got NHL. They got MLB. They got it all. They're bringing you that real sports action that you can get at the Win Las Vegas. Well, now you can get it in the palm of your hands thanks to the Win Betting app. Oh, and a bunch of fun odds boosts, parlay boosts. They got it all, and some of the best odds in the business available over on the Win Bet app. Get started today and you'll receive a special offer up to $500 risk free bet. Terms and conditions apply. Get the details over at wynnbet.com. Download the app today. Win bet, baby. Win big with win bet. I mean, you look like you wanted to say something, right? I, I, that music, it strangely gets me hyped up. Same as the, uh, the, the round ball rock, round ball rock for it some is, reason it is here. And I'm sure we'll be doing a little bit more NBA talk. We're going to be leaking into some uh, NFL where I think we're going to get back to our mock drafts, the, um, or not the mock drafts, the best ball drafts. Those were fun. Come on, Sean, our new stance is that mock draft. I mean, Fantasy mock drafts, yes, are stupid. Fantasy mock drafts are stupid, but actual NFL mock drafts, we got some up on the site. Those are happening. Rod and of course uh, Adam Pelletier, Fantasy Don, they both uh, have their mock drafts up. We're get, we got ours coming. Well, first, for, real quick, I think we need to start calling the first Don of fantasy, okay? Because I don't think anyone else is titled the Don. No. So I like it. Let's fantasy let's, Don. Let's claim that first. Well, it, it came up, uh, you know, I, I originally stumbled upon calling him the Don when we kept having him on for bills mafia. So the Don yeah. of bills mafia, but, it works. but now, now I think just throw it onto the fantasy world. Uh, well, it's going to be copied now that we've spoken it breaking news, Ryan relatively. And uh, just hit on a couple of NFL things before we bring the golf guys on the Sam Darnold trade jets. Get uh, three picks, a sixth rounder in 2020, uh, second rounder and fourth rounder in 2022. Uh, ships him off to the Panthers. Instant reaction on the Darnold trade, Kramer. That Matt Rule fleeced the Jets. Really? For a player that, like, he didn't give up all that much for a bullet. And I know, like, people will shout out like Josh Rosen, and we we all agree, Josh Rosen. Like, if we just photoshopped him off the graphic from that draft class, <laughs> no one's gonna be upset about it. Not even Josh Rosen. Sam Darnold ha- has shown moments, and in, Sean, I I think you're probably gonna be a critic of Sam Darnold, but anything would be better than the situation he was in in New York. And you like Matt Rule, you like the culture he's building there. And the offensive system is one that you know it created. Uh, it created a monster in Joe Burrow. Uh, I think he's probably you know at a minimum it's competition. Uh, at a maximum, you're getting a first. You're getting a top first round pick for nothing. Yeah, and and, and I think the change of scenery thing going from New York <laughs> to K- Carolina, it's like cliche, right? Like sure. The media is still exists there, but they, they're, they're focused on Hubert Davis. They're, they're focused on other things. Like, yeah, the, the Panthers are a big deal. I'm sure, but the Panthers aren't the biggest deal. And while the jets are losers and have been a loser franchise, I think the, the stakes in a weird way have gone down for him. So I love it for Sam Darnold. I love it for the Panthers. I think Sean, I'm going to be, I'm going to be getting even higher 
on on the situation in Carolina. Well, and and we're talking about it a, raises the ceiling of what they can do next year. Well, I think. We're we're talking about best ball. I think he is an interesting. I, I like stacking oh, the best balls. He's him it. with Robbie Anderson, who, who they had a connection in New York. That could be like a deep uh, deep fantasy play. I mean, again, I don't think he's going to be a top ten fantasy quarterback, but I think in that offense and that de- the Carolina defense like, really still has issues. So I think him from a fantasy perspective, kind of interesting in that offense with a bunch of weapons. What, Darnold only twenty three years old. Exactly. And what was wrong with him? Like, what was wrong with Darnold in New York? He sucked. And I I think the argument against Darnold. Arnold is he, wa- he wasn't prepared, right? Like he was a young kid. He came in young, right? Probably needed yeah. some more reps in college, but then what was his coaching situation like? No. And again, you look to Ryan Tannehill. That's probably why <laughs> that's probably why they had to give up more than the fourth. Cause when the, uh, when the Titans traded for Tannehill, all they gave up was the fourth rounder. I think the second rounder that you had to add on in the sixth rounder, that is the Tannehill tax because Whoa. they've seen Tannehill. They've seen a quarterback, not in the Adam uh, Gay system and they've seen how well they've done. So there is, uh, I, I think, think Arnold like tickles that elite prospect. Well, if thing. you're, if you're the Panthers, you're looking to get a quarterback. Yeah, roll the dice on on Darnold. If it doesn't work out, you're you're, you're going to be drafted the, high. This is how it went. Matt Rule f- very recently was in college, almost certainly at least took a look at Sam Darnold in the recruiting process. Uh, he, this he had that kind. He's like, oh, we can get we can get a first rounder for nothing. We should take a shot. Yeah, we should at a minimum take a shot. I mean, and you know what you like if you're a Panthers fan, your team's taking shots. That's what this is. Now they have to show a willingness to discard if it's not working out. They need, to, but but we'll see. I mean, at least they're looking for a quarterback. Like you could argue that. Yeah, no, and there there are other teams kind of sitting sitting pat uh, with guys who maybe you don't agree with, uh, like my Giants, who, who you think they should be moving. Yeah, and they're not. Uh, and so at least they're moving, I guess they're, at least they're not expecting something different from the same equation. Well, and they realize Teddy Bridgewater isn't the answer. I I still think PJ Walker is kind of an interesting prospect, but he's certainly Teddy Bridgewater. You got to feel bad for that. Well, now he's, he's going to get traded. Maybe he ends up uh, on the Broncos. They're going to be shopping him around. Feels like he's got a Sam Bradford career. You know? (laughs) No, I mean, don't come on. Don't insert insult Teddy Bridgewater like that. Teddy Bridgewater was always available to play. (laughs) He was sabotaged by the medical staff. He wasn't Sam Bradford. It was just a, a complete soft. Nobody. And Sam Bradford got paid to an insane, insane amount. Yeah. Uh, one more note, Ryan. In the office, you you were coming in hot. You are staunchly opposed to the rising draft stuck of one Kyle Pitts. You made Colby and I start breaking down Kyle Pitts game film, sh- saying that you're not seeing anything explosive out of Kyle well, Pitts. Right. That he's that he's getting drafted way too high. First in of these all, mocks. I love that we have the ability to quickly hop into the film room now. Yes, Colby's on his coach's clicker. <laughs> if you Col- want to know what it's like working with Colby, just fires up old. I mean, we were watching the, the Dantam- Eagles Cowboys from 1995 today. <laughs> the database doesn't have GPS, no. but the database can find on a TV with a TV remote search thumb can find old video highlights. Like yes. No, like nothing. Dial anyway, in. Uh, look here, here's the, here's the pit stake. And I think the, unfortunately, as much as you like to argue with me, I think you probably agree with me. Uh, we watched some. We watched a highlight reel, so it's designed to make him look good. And I dare you to find the 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 highlight in there where you're like, "Whoa, he popped!" I get it. He's big. He's physical. We've seen other big physical guys flame out. We've seen other hyper athletic stretch tight ends, whatever you want to call them, flame out. As a Giants fan, it terrifies me to think of a guy <laughs> like Evan Ingram. I'm not kidding. I, I do think I and do they think might the Evan take him Ingram. at eleven. They might take him, and I get it. Colby nailed it. I think you left at one point. Uh, he nailed it where he said, "Look, uh, Kyle Pitts probably has a higher bust rate than most of the guys projected to go in the top ten. That's but fair. He also has a higher chance of being like an all timer. He has a higher ceiling than almost like you could argue he has the highest ceiling of anyone in the draft." Based on his physical skill set, if he gets paired with the right offensive system, which I also kind of agree with. So at some point, you have to balance like when does it become okay to take an offensive weapon, and that's really what the discussion is. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess if you're looking at at that way of you're drafting Kyle Pitts as a pass catcher, as an yeah. offensive weapon, when then is it why okay? not? 
then why not lean in into one of the big three yeah. receiver options in Jamar Chase, Devonta Smith, or Jalen Waddle instead of this tight end hybrid? I, I think maybe it's the type of D, the offense you plan on playing. It doesn't seem like he's going to be, uh, you know, lining up at the end and inline tight end. He's going to be split out as a receiver ish. Uh, but then again, why not just draft a receiver? I, I see your I see your logic there. I he see- is exciting, but you're right. Drafting a a, a receive a tight end in the top ten hasn't had great results but, historically, and it's like you against like we all joked about how the SEC has turned into this strange offensive conference with no one plays defense. Lane yeah, Kiff, Big like, Twelve. It, it's so sure he he did it, but we a lot of the highlight reel we watched the thing that really stood out to you. Like, sure, he has giant hands. He catches everything. He can obviously make athletic plays in the air. But what stood out to me is he wasn't getting bumped off the line mm. and he was wide open. And sure, maybe he was running open, maybe he was undressing people, but like get 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 some contact, show me what you're going to do over the middle with NFL. I just it worries me because guys have looked really athletic before and <laughs> turned out to be soft or not know how to play the game or not be smart. One of the things that I think uh, tight ends, the reason why they bust a lot you have to be a little bit more mentally advanced to play inside. You have, you're probably making more decisions, whether that's blocking or your option route. And I guarantee the shit he's running at Florida is like, just run, you know, hit the seam. And and I I think that's the area where is he going to be ready to come in and just play, you know, they can Andy Reid gets them. I trust that he'll do something good with him. Yeah. But are there twenty Detroit Lions? Are there no. twenty coaches? Uh, yeah, if Dan Campbell's just like chew kneecaps, bro. <laughs> it's just like he's gonna be like, what? Yeah, I, if he I, ends up on the Falcons, that's interesting. And again, needs, you need the quarterback. He needs and a, again, that's why I, I if I was the Giants, uh, I'm still looking at Trey Lance at, at number eleven, right? Kyle Pitts needs someone that's gonna teach him how to play football. That's my take on that. Well, Maybe I'll maybe I'll have to call Joe it, Judge is a call teacher. Call my buddy uh, Gronk. Joe and, Judge is a teacher. Give him some tight end lessons. Odds <laughs> crowd, baby. I straight. I would like that if he got drafted into a situation <laughs> where he could learn from Gronk. Well, Gronk's a physical blocker, and that's why Gronk's. Well, that's. Why I mean, that's one of the many reasons he's a first ballot Hall of Fame tight end, and that's why we have his autograph football here in the studio. Good friends with Gronk, also good friends with the makers over at Odds Crowd. And that's not just because I got second place and won $2,500 in their free March Madness contest. They got plenty of uh, free betting contests, including a $2,000 MLB contest. Still plenty of time to get in that. I mean, honestly, you can max out your units, you can play every day and make all the picks you want. It's it's a free fantasy contest. Really great and really fun to use. Uh, as like a private betting contest between you and your buddies. You guys want to set up a weekly against the spread MLB pool, uh, NBA, NHL, whatever sport you and your buddies are into. Very easy to set up a little private betting competition between you. And uh, yeah, besides that, a $500 free weekly contest. Again, completely free. What do you have to lose? The only, the only way you lose, Ryan, is by not entering. And you can download the app for free over at sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash odds. That's sports gambling podcast.com slash odds. Joining us on the line, the co-host of the golf gambling podcast on the sports gambling podcast network, Boston capper and Steve Shermer. Steve, what's it like to uh, spend a year now? What year plus hosting a podcast with Boston capper? You know, it's great. I mean, I never thought the chowder head would call into your little voicemail and give uh, NFL picks, uh, you know, every week would uh, end up being my, uh, my co-host and uh, you know, a, uh, you know, coworker. So yeah, listen, it's been great. Uh, we've, we've been pounding out podcasts all week, pounding out the content for masters weekend. It's been pretty good. So uh, have to be here tonight. Thanks for having us on. Yeah, of course. And uh, as well, Boston capper, you started out to like, uh, like Steve said, just calling in and now co-host of the, uh, the golf gambling podcast. I heard you, you're actually doing other radio hits, real, yeah. AM, real FM yeah. sports talk radio. What's going on capper. 
Yeah, man. Listen, uh, there's a uh, there's a bunch of generous down here. He's actually a Boston guy too. We just happened to uh, I don't know whatever. We ended up drinking at the same bar together, and uh, and this is <laughs> and, uh, and like, doing a little networking. Era. Yeah, a little networking. <laughs> and this is when he when I was doing shit, I was just like, yeah, man, whatever. Like, hey, listen, I like I love the game. You guys ever listen to the Sports Game Podcast? These guys got their shit going on. And he's a degenerate too. Uh, he ended up getting a little over his head in Chicago and stopped back for a little bit. <laughs> Sounds like but, uh, one of our listeners. I, I got it a little over my head, but I'm you know back to just sensibly betting uh, MLB five can, five days a week. Can I publicly pay them a compliment? Sure, Jim? Kramer. Let I, it. Rip. I know you don't like compliments all the time that aren't paid to you directly. Uh, look, I I this is uh, I don't know. Like, can you think of a, a a stranger pairing? I don't have a good golf reference here. I didn't come with my homework, but. This feels a little bit like Phil and Rodman. I, I <laughs> pulling back the curtain Tiger all the Woods way. In sobriety, I, I, I'm not someone to roll my eyes. But when when Capper said, "Hey, I'm going to do a golf podcast," I said, "Sure, sure, 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 sure." Uh, <laughs> let me know when you're going to do that. He's like, "No, no, no, no. It's going to be me and Steve. It's going to be great." I'm like, "Sure, sure, 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 sure." And uh, yeah, uh, it's. I was listening to the, uh, the. I was listening to the preview show, and, or I'm sorry, the DFS show with Nagels, and I gotta say. It's uh, you guys have chemistry. I'm gonna I'm gonna look at you guys. See the center. Chem- the chemistry is there. I, Pro- probably a- shocking. I mean, Capper <laughs> is turning into a host, Sean. Which I mean, you know, still there, there's some words in golf that just aren't compatible. Era, with the, Bermuda, the Boston, the Boston <laughs> accent, but it's great. And uh, yeah, Steve. I mean, er- everything's coming together. And Steve, Steve has, uh, you know, he comes in with his uh, his sharp. Pointed uh, data-driven comments. Yeah, everything I mean, everything's flowing right now. And I was listening. I've listened to uh, an hour and a half out of their their like a hundred minute. Like, <laughs> hey, we're gonna we see you, Colby Dan. We know how to do a two hour episode too. Uh, it works. Everything works. It, everything no, is firing right now. The rocket, the SGPN rocket ship, is getting ready to take the fuck off, Sean. Chemistry is uh, is real. It's legit. Yeah, I mean, if you were asked to handicap, would this podcast work out? Would <laughs> would Capper be able to get his shit together enough to be a legit co-host uh, to Steve's oasis and fountain of gambling uh, called gambling knowledge? Yeah, I mean, we were looking at plus four hundred, plus five hundred dog, and uh, cash in that easily. So and here we are. What episode? Well, you guys just put what forty eight in the can? Yeah, forty eight. Yeah. Number forty eight. So, so here's the thing. So, as we've developed chemistry, you know, listen, I like to give out a lot of leans and stats, and I know how to poke the bear, and I know how to push <laughs> Capper's buttons. I know little stats and trends that can get him just make foolish insta bets on stuff. Like, I'll give him the like most random lean ever on a guy, and I know it's just going to strike his fancy. So, you know, listen. I mean, listen. I, you're exactly right. Uh, we've developed a little. Chemistry. Uh, I'm Tom Kite, and he's John Daly. I guess if you want to put it that way. So, uh, yeah, good. listen, it's been great. You know, thanks to one of his hosts, and uh, yeah, it's 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 definitely Whoa. been a lot of fun, and we look forward to lots more I, episodes in the future. I can't believe you fucking guys didn't have any faith in me. Well, listen, I mean, that's ridiculous. Well, here's the thing. I, listen, I am the fucking OG. Yeah, you are. This you are. Goddamn well, podcast. Definitely, yes. definitely yes. an OG. And hey, uh, that's why you were given a goddamn. Let me hold on. This, this is. You can watch this on YouTube later. That's why you were given a goddamn opportunity. All right. And just like Joe Judge. All right. Everyone's got a fucking job. Know your goddamn role. All right. We're, I'm real hyped on the Giants right now, Steve. We can talk about that later. Well, but, same, same for the. Na- right. I think Nagels nailed well, the. Uh, Giants I had an angle. idea on the drive over, and I figured I'd bring it up in front of Steve and you. Should. I think we have to do a Giants roundtable. You have to be the moderator <laughs> to poke all of us. We'll get Zach, Steve, oh, Nagels, wow. all of us on. We'll we'll we'll, uh, we'll we'll I don't know. Be therapeutic, maybe. That sounds yeah, like it's only fair. You have an Eagles show. We got to have a Giants. There show you too, go. Right. We got to yeah. balance it out. Tell the tell Kramer. Awesome, like two. Mediocre fucking team podcast. Yeah, let's do that. Let's do that. Those are, those are the most interesting ones. And C- you guys, Capper wants to host the Cam Newton. Pa- podcast Patriots still have Cam Newton at quarterback. I hate you so much. You guys will be lucky to hit mediocre with your with your free agent spending spree and reinvesting in Cam Newton. <laughs> Steve, Listen, Steve we're, gonna get, we're gonna get Teddy B or Jimmy G, and we're still gonna suck. So uh, whatever, dude. Listen, we're not here to talk about the Patriots, right? We're here no, to talk about the yeah, fucking we're here, Masters. We're here baby. to talk Let's about go. the Masters. We are here to talk and about the Masters. Earlier today, Steve goes so what 20, 30 minutes, and I go sure, 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 Steve. It will only be twenty or thirty minutes. It we're always ten minutes in. We're not even talking about golf. It always goes long. We're live here on the locker room. So if you have a question about the Masters or uh, Capper's blood alcohol level, feel free to request. 
us to chat and we can get you on. We are also doing a $500 free masters DFS contest. Very easy. You just go to sports gambling podcast.com slash masters. You send in a screenshot of you leaving a review of the golf gambling podcast on Apple podcast, and you will get the link for the uh, $500 winner. Take all DraftKings DFS contest. Let's get to the nitty gritty. Of course, Steve, I've been doing my research, AKA reading the articles that you write on the site. And obviously the big question coming in is how will this course play in April uh, versus may? What are we, what are we looking at here? And then obviously, you know, coming in from last year, even where it, what was the deal last year? It was uh, super wet and a lot of birdies. Cause the ball wasn't moving around too much. I think where are we at with the course conditions? <laughs> yeah. So while we were winding the clock, you know, six months. So obviously the tournament got moved because of COVID and it was placed in November. And a lot, there were a lot of questions about how it would play. Like, you know, Georgia, the weather can be kind of, you know, cold or windy. There was speculation. That it could be really tough masters. And what ended up happening was it was unseasonably warm. It rained a lot. And one of the big things that happened at that golf course is you know, it's, it's actually a Bermuda golf course. I've gotten into this podcast a lot of talk about grass types, but they had to scramble to overseed it with the rye grass. And it wasn't the same type of grass. That it was in April. You know, some of the Bermuda hadn't gone dormant yet. It was still a little too warm to, you know, kill it off. So it just played a lot different. Like it was softer, you know, it, it was more of a driving show and a putting contest instead of like what we're used to, like a ball striking, like scrambling contest. So, you know, going back to April here, by all accounts, the golf course is really firm. You know, balls are run around the fairway. It's really hard to stop the ball on the green. It's hard to access certain pin locations. So I think we're going to see a pretty much total opposite flip of what we saw in November. You know, it's going to be difficult. I think iron play is going to be a little more important. Scrambling is going to be a little more important. You know, it's it, it, a lot of guys are going to be missing fairways too. And, you know, it's going to be more of a grind than just, you know, basically a hundred meter dash that was last year when Dustin Johnson just ran away with the thing. Ever since I, I found out the course was going to be firm this week, I couldn't <laughs> wait to make the joke about not as firm as Jim Nance when he shows up. He, the whole college basketball—it's like him in quarantine. All he wanted to talk about is fucking Masters. It's like, dude, I get it. I'm stoked for the Masters. Well, too. yeah, and again, he's got that golf course in his backyard that plays the <laughs> Masters music on repeat. Which I—I I, I mean, it sounds awesome, but there's no way I'm not shanking some of those balls no, right into I, my own I house. Definitely smash my own house. <laughs> oh yeah, I mean, he's got the replica of the six at Pebble Beach. But yeah, like I, I've seen the videos, and I would put one through like his bathroom. <laughs> Or something like that. Yeah, that's sure. that's just that's just like housekeeper's bathroom window. Like he's not he's not shooting balls. He at his own he's not putting window. the golf course next to yeah, his if own. You got, if you got yeah, laminated toast money, you got uh, guest quarters <laughs> as well. Uh, Capper, moving over to you, Bryson yeah. DeChambeau. He of course America's uh, favorite meathead. No. We've uh, really Steve. Kudos to Steve for uh, tuning us into his uh, quarantine uh, weightlifting body <laughs> transformation video, but he's been making some headlines saying that uh, quote, obviously there's something in the bag this week. That's very helpful. I won't Whoa. go into specifics, Whoa. but just know this has been a few years in the making and I'm very excited for it. What, what, what is uh, Bryson up to? So uh, we actually talked about this uh, uh, on the pod prior to coming on here and I I don't know what the fuck it is. Like, I mean, maybe it's some stupid driver, some weird hybrid thing. I don't know. In reality, it's probably just like we said, HGH and it's going to help him <laughs> figure it out. You know what I mean? Like it, it help him get over it. And, but Steve talked about it earlier today. Like, man, like we were seemed like he learned his lesson at TPC. He played the course a lot different than he did at the masses a year prior. Um, but now he's talking about cutting the trees again at 11. He's got some magic fucking beans in his bag and he's <laughs> twisted himself into the ground on the driving range. When v- VJ Singh's watching him, like, I don't know, man. Uh, so I-, I won't spoil it. Steve's got a pretty good take uh, on it uh, on the, uh, on the podcast that we did before this one. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I don't know, man. I don't think he's America's favorite meathead either. Like Gronk is America's favorite. Meathead. <laughs> That's true. Like, like people, Bryce people is Bryce. most uh, divisive meathead is probably the more accurate term. 
Yeah, you're probably right about that because like you got the golf nerds, like uh, like the older cats who are like he's breaking the game. Like, dude, whatever. Listen, everything evolves and you have to change, right? Change the courses, do something. Equipment's better. People are bigger and stronger and faster, just like it is in football. You don't have John Daly out there shooting, <laughs> shooting and winning goddamn majors anymore. You can't smoke butts out there. Like these guys all have workout regimens. Like whatever. And he has decided to chase speed and whatever. I mean, it, it, it worked out for him at Wingfoot. I mean, since then. I mean, I don't know. We'll see. Not really. I feel uh, like Bryson though is the is, like Bryson's not the guy who lifted weights for sports. He's the guy that got bullied a lot and then was found a CrossFit. And was like, yeah, I can <laughs> I can race through mud longer than you. He's definitely and, yeah, in the it, keto. It, it's basically like if I took HGH and then I just got huge and started spouting like, Pythagorean theorem and drinking like you know creatine. You know? That would be Steve. Please do that. That would make for a very entertaining uh, golf gambling <laughs> podcast of Steve on HGH. Part time mechanic, full time daredevil. <laughs> Steve, your uh, your articles always have a bunch of great nuggets as far as stats, trends what, you know, kind of formulas to help you pick some winners for the masters. One that just kind of seems obvious, but uh, possibly overlooked when people get a little too cute as far as filling out their DFS lineup, making their picks, but very simple. 11 out of the 12 masters winners wore tourney winners that season. Um, Is it really just that easy to pick guys that have won? I I mean, it seems like right away, you're going to knock off some guys. Uh, that haven't won in the calendar year, and and knowing that stat, does it, it does it highlight some guys that maybe wouldn't be on your radar normally? Yeah, I mean, I, I think there is something to it. Like, I mean, the Masters, it, it tests all parts of your game. Like, you have to drive it really well. You gotta, you know, hit your irons great. Like, all every you have to do a lot of things really well, and you have to be able to win a tournament in order to do really, you know, a lot of things really well. So. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of pressure, like obviously guys who have won recently know what it's like to be, you know, in the fire and like, you know, get it done. So yeah, I mean, that's been able to kind of cross some names off the list, at least from my end. Like, I mean, uh, Rory McIlroy has been struggling for a while now. He's got swing changes. He hasn't won since 2019 over in China. Like that's you know, do we think he's going to turn around in a week? I mean, maybe it's and that, Mac that China win does not count. Yeah, I, was I mean, I I was awake for it, but you weren't. But. No one else was awake for it, Steve. You're the weirdo <laughs> watching golf. It's like it's like an old married couple. Show. I know, great. I it's like the it. chemistry. Love like the it, so. love the dynamic. Uh, exactly. There. So well, but yeah, it, so so like other names like Xander Schauffele. I mean, technically he won the tour championship, but because the PJ Tour has their BS, you know, FedEx Cup, you know, layout, he didn't get the win. DJ got the win. Um, you know, other guys who have won. Tony Fino, Tony Fino has won five years. Um, Lee Westwood hasn't won anything in a while. You know, Sung J M hasn't won in a while. So yeah, like there, there are guys who basically haven't won within the last 12 months that if you're looking for a reason not to bet them, there's a quick reason right there. So, so you know, maybe it could save it, you putting bets on somebody who maybe you shouldn't. Yeah. That being said, I, I, I don't know. Am I, am I crazy to consider Rory in a DFS lineup capper. I, I felt like I've gone back and forth with enjoying Rory. He seems like completely off. And then he kind of comes back in where are you at uh capper with Rory uh, coming this into is, the mass. This is important. Uh, please answer correctly. Cause Sean's going to change his DFS lineup based on your I know. I, I don't want to have to adjust my lineup once again on the air, but where, where are you at with uh, McElroy coming into the masters? So, uh, so Rory was a high guy for us to peg, right? We, we, we had talked about this. Like obviously, Hey, listen, but first of all, he, regardless of how he's been playing, like the pressure of him to win the masters is real, right? That's the last one he needs and it hangs over his head and he says it doesn't bother him, but it clearly does. What's nice about Rory is he talks about, uh, he's pretty open with the media, right? And uh, what was it three weeks ago, Steve, two weeks ago. Yeah, it was it was after the players, right? Right. Yeah, yeah. And and he talked about seeing Bryson uh doing what he did and starting to chase speed, right? And it fucked with his swing. And he hasn't been able to really recover from that. I mean, this guy was literally like the best driver of the golf ball in the world, and he decided he needed to get 10 yards more distance because fucking Meathead was hitting it 20 <laughs> yards longer. It's an right? arms race. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, it really, yeah, seriously. Yeah. Yeah. The, dude, that's a great way to put it. Right. And so he felt like he had to, and he felt like he'd lost his swing at that point. And he just hasn't looked right. Ian Poulter put him in a fucking locker. And I know Steve <laughs> dismisses match play, right? Because there's no stats data behind it, but it's real golf. And that's looking your competitor in the eye and Ian fucking Poulter, the guy who wears whatever pants he wears, little weirdo British guy stuffed him in a locker. And that's what happened. Uh, so, I mean, I, I mean, I was, we were talking about it on, on the previous cast. Like if he dropped to 20 or 22, I would have snapped at him just because he's Rory and the numbers wrong. Same way we did a JT at the players. Mm-hmm. Um, but for DFS, there's no reason for you to play him right now. He seems lost. He seems broken. Yeah. Great, co- great course history here. And it is hard to ignore, but you don't have to do it in DFS. If, if you want, if you want to play Rory bet him. Right. Don't, don't ruin a DFS lineup, especially if you're only doing like one or three or something. Like that. Yeah. I mean, and like with, with Rory too, I mean, there's another guy who wasn't popular right now that is $200 cheaper that like, listen, like a, a lot of people this week has been pounding the narrative of, well, everyone should be sleeping on Rory. He's not that far off. And you know, at that point it's, you kind of mush it, but no one's talking about Xander because he hasn't played very well either, mm. but he's been kind of slumping lately you know, but he's flying under the radar. He doesn't have a lot of ownership either. You know, he's been playing better than Rory has over the last six months. At least the form is a little closer than what Rory has been. So, I mean, Xander could be the sneaky pivot play instead of Rory because it's, it, you know, when people talk about Rory, like you might talk him into ownership. So, you know, there, there are options with, you know, other pivot plays than Rory, you know, based on guys who are maybe down on their luck. Yeah, All I, right. I would agree with that. But that that Xander spiel that he just did—that's the Nagel's effect. Like he's infected <laughs> by Coe's brain. It's well, I know you love Xander. I mean, Xander, Xander is, is also a, is a fun guy to Sean, throw in there. Sean, that's in the Kyler bucket though, so you got to be careful. It's true. I don't know. Kyler's a little. Kyler is a little. Name worse starts than. with X. <laughs> starts with X. What about? Uh, Praise I, up to DMX for the stroke, by the way. Yeah. Oh Let's yeah. Go. Hopefully DMX goes through. To do a do a couple dog slew for oh, our boy man. DMX. Hopefully, hopefully he gets healthy. Ten years strong running DMX out there. Yeah. God God bless him. As far as uh, kind of some of the favorites, I know Kramer and I had Kepka to win the Masters. I, I in our serious FSGA fantasy um, in that futures draft we did. I think we had talked to Steve and. And uh, maybe Capper as well, as far as like who would be a good value. I think what did we get him at when we threw that 14 out? Fourteen to one. Fourteen to one. <laughs> so now not a great price because he's dealing with a knee injury. Steve, I know you're probably following this closely. Is Kepka someone? Wh- where are we at with Kepka? Is he is he like undervalued now because people are scared off the knee injury, or is he not worth touching just because of the knee injury? Or should we just say fuck it and still ride? I mean, he's here, right? Yes. So, I, I mean, he's been spending a lot of time on social media, kind of trolling people and like dunking on people. So like the, the Brad Faxon <laughs> basically said his injury was more of a six, eight month injury. And then Kepka, you know, quote tweeted him with a Michael uh, Jordan meme of, well, I took that personally. So and he's been doing that all week. Like I, 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 people were talking about how, you know, he's trying to find like weird lines and angles to like walk the course better. And then apparently there was a photo of him like crouching down on the green, you know, in like a catcher's position, like reading the pot. And I saw that. That was great. Cool. Yeah. So like, I mean, there are question marks. Like I, I kind of, you don't always get an honest answer out of Brooks out of these like press conferences. There, there seems to be a little bit of a wall with him. Yeah. You know, it could, he could be still hiding an injury. You know, I, I kind of think like maybe like the injury is a little worse than he's letting on, but he cares a lot about this master. He's putting a lot of his energy into this thing to win Just like, kind of like how tiger did back in 2008, to the U S open, like he definitely wasn't healthy coming into that, but he wanted to win it. He knew that basically his season was going to be over. He put everything he had to, to win it. Maybe Brooks is going to do that this week. So, I mean, I, his, his, his outright number is really good. You know, for DFS, there's a lot of guys around that range that probably are a little safer that have just as good of an upside. But I mean, for a betting perspective, I mean, the ceiling on him is huge. He almost won in 2019. He did very well last year at the Masters and didn't have very good form coming in. So, yeah, I mean, it's Brooks at a major and his number is reasonable. It's like 25 to 1 right now. Mm -hmm. You can get him on 30 on some books. Yeah. It might be worth a stab. Yeah, fourteen to one, not looking amazing, Kramer. But uh, yeah, I, I, but, I still think but there's it sounds hope for like Kepka. you guys like. I like the narrative of him putting, you know, just kind of putting the team on his back, so to speak, and really going out well, there and grinding. I, and I like this gimmick. It seems like there's the like 
higher variance guys that you prefer to bet on. And then, yeah. and then you're 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 leaving them off the DFS. Well, and, and again, the DFS lineup probably also are you, are you chasing that? Oh, so are you chasing that Billy Maker, or you, are you? you got or are you doing question. a 50-50? Yes. Are you play? So, based on what you just said about Brooks, it sounds like, and based on how I think you guys think about this, you're not playing Brooks in DFS formats. Oh, I am. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it's like you said, it depends on the formula. Like in Millie Maker, is, yeah. if its ownership is under ten percent, sure. I'm just like, I mean, there, there's as as you guys see, there's a lot of good options, in nine thousand dollars, and there, there's some contrarian plays in the nine thousand dollar range too that maybe are even a little safer that have some upside. Like a Tony Fee now this week, he's not coming in in good form, but you know his ownership is a little depressed coming in, and he's playing great. Like. You know, I mean, he might have the win equity as Brooks Kepka, but he could finish second or third. He's definitely capable of that. So, yeah, I mean, th- there's other play contrarian plays in the nine thousand dollar range that might, you know, have a pretty high ceiling as well, but are a little safer than Brooks. But, you know, I mean, if you're going for the win equity with an outright, or if you're in like a you know Millie Maker and you see Kepka's ownership is going to be five percent because everybody's scared of the knee injury, yeah, go for it. Why not? Yes. Well, what do you what do you predict if you had a guess, uh, Steve? Brooks, uh, Brooks ownership percentage. What do you think that would clock in at? Well, I mean, uh, it, the, he has gotten some steam over the past couple of days. I mean, uh, his presence on social media, like golf channel <laughs> is like pounding, you know, they're, they're pushing it. Everybody's <laughs> face. just like with Bryson. They're pushing that in everybody's <laughs> face. So the ownership has come up a little bit. I don't know, maybe like 10%. Uh, I'm you showing, know, in, in I'm showing 12 right now. All okay. right. Well, 10, 12, that's immaterial. It's, it's something, it's something really different. So, <laughs> you know, he, I mean, he, 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 he loves to correct me with numbers, but as soon as I correct this him, this is with so numbers, great. I really this is, this is a, real, a real married I couple. I can't <laughs> wait to, to play a foursome with you guys. So, and we're, I mean, we're, we're ready to go right now, but yeah, you guys have got matching outfits, man. You guys are ready to go. We're, re- we're going to play. We got to little... do an SGPN uh, invitational, <laughs> figure out where to have it. Well, Absolutely. listen, if, if you guys are going to do it out in, uh, we got to book a place out in Vegas uh, in September. Mm, mm, yeah. Let's oh. go. Oh, baby, the world is becoming we do, normal. We do like a Ryder Cup style. Oh, that would be fun. <laughs> that would be actually be a lot. Depend how many people want to play. Like now, wait, uh, I I may have missed it, but you guys, I know you guys did play golf together. Who who ended yeah. up coming out ahead? Oh, oh yes. Yeah, I, 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 I want I want the guess. I want the guess first before <laughs> before we before I hear. Hmm. That's interesting because if if Capper's saying I He's want the guess, that man. is probably Capper <laughs> beating Steve. Steve, I imagine more measured game. I imagine Capper higher highs, well, lower lows, Capper's, higher vol- Capper's maybe guy you play in DFS because you want that <laughs> volatility if you're chasing a milli maker. So I'll, I'll say I think maybe I'll say this. I think Steve maybe probably the better golfer day to day, but Capper got the best of him well, on there, man. I, I would imagine Steve bit longer off the tee. Yes. May, maybe Capper can scramble a bit better. So I guess <laughs> depending on the course, I don't know if they were on some uh shit. I'm if what's the name of the grass that we love when Steve Bermuda? Said? No, not Bermuda. No, Steve. Kiyo, the Kuyo, what is it? Uh Kuyo grass. Kuyo. Oh, oh yes. No, it was it was Bermuda fairways with bent grass greens. Bent ah. grass, that's what I like to hear you say. Uh look, I, I I'm gonna say uh, obviously just Steve one, right? No, no, you don't. Oh, so, Steve. so here's so every summer I go through a bout of the shanks, <laughs> <laughs> and right a week oh, no. before I played with Capper, I had the shanks. I didn't even keep score, so it was a forfeit. I was just out there hanging out, you know, hanging with the friends. But yeah, uh, Capper waxed me, didn't keep score. I was hidden into bushes. Yeah. Wasn't that fun? But you know, I had a great time with them. So <laughs> yeah, it was a that. great time, man. Fucking, it was uh, me, my buddy Tommy, and him. And hey, listen, and, and Kramer, uh, listen, I, I'm not, I'm not short off the tee. I do this the past weekend. I think it's up mountain. I was hitting like two ninety, <laughs> two ninety five, like Long all day, every cocks. day. All right, <laughs> uh, it probably looks bigger too. What do we got probably, here? Let's gotta, tr- gotta trim the hedges. <laughs> oh, oh! All right, we getting the masters music in here. Class it up a little bit. Want to shout out PicksWise.com, friend of the program. They got it all. They they went hard for March Madness, but don't worry, plenty of picks left over at PicksWise.com. Free picks for the NBA, free picks for the MLB, the NHL, and of course. They got you covered for the Masters. Hello, friends. You want some free picks? Head over to PicksWise.com. And speaking of free, we're giving out free daily video picks over on Better Than Vegas. That's right, Better Than Vegas. It's like YouTube, but for sports gambling, what you really care about. Capper makes some cameos on there. 
all your uh, favorite SGPN people cranking out videos, daily free video picks. What more could you want? Make sure you check out our profile. Follow it, sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash BTV. Sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash BTV. And now we move to the first fairway, the fir- on the tee box. God, God help Ryan us. Ryan Kramer addresses the ball and God. gives out his first DFS pick. Oh. Ryan on the number one tee box. Who are you picking and why? And we're gonna have Capper and uh, Steve grade our DFS picks. Well, I very badly. Wa- I, I, I don't know how these guys feel. I mean, it's. Uh, I really bad. I wanted to put Bryson in this in this lineup. <laughs> but, but, but he's so damn expensive, and, and I I I, I kind of once I got past him, I was I wasn't uh, I wasn't teased by any of these guys until I got down to. Oh, by the way, Jordan Spieth winning last week. I called it. I am a professional <laughs> golf tout. <laughs> yes. Um, uh, second place, I think, in the one and done. I'm dominating. Uh, rookie, rookie, uh, beginner's luck, maybe. Anyway, coming back, 9,600. Colin Morikawa. I think it's Ooh. important to have fucking stones. Oh I think it's important God. to have good ball striking ability. Mm. Nice. And I think what Steve and Capper will, will tell me. Is they like? I, I actually don't know how well he scrambles, but I assume he scrambles well too. But I think you have to hit the ball well, and I think you just have to have stones. And I think I do like the pedigree angle, and I do like the fact that I want a I want a guy who's got some drip. You know, I like the drip on my golf DFS lineups. <laughs> so Colin Morikawa, I missed him in the one and done. I, I didn't get the the victory. He has one as well, right? That's important. We just talked about that. So well, I'm with you, for, Kramer. First guy, oh, I, I'll nice. let you. I'll let them uh, grade this pick Ooh, as a group grading. because I'm also on <laughs> Morikawa, as Steve points out in his uh, in his Feels best. Chalky. Bets uh, to win the it's Masters. It's not chalky. It's not chalky at all. Really, you you don't think the ownership will be crazy on Morikawa? No, there, not, there is no. a there is a big mainstream pushback on Morikawa. Oh, There's love it! You guys, you guys are getting nice leverage on that. Ooh. Nice. So, I mean, you don't need to talk me into taking Kyle Morikawa. I'm still living off that hit uh, of him <laughs> last year. So, I love me some Kyle Morikawa. Ninety six hundred. I, I feel like this guy should be priced north of 10 K, but yeah, Kyle Morikawa. It sounds like uh Steven Capper, you guys are both on this. Steve, what, what, what would you grade this pick? I mean, I, I would give it probably an a minus. I mean, th- there are some red flags. I mean, the, the putting is, you know, a, a concern. And I mean, it's one appearance of the masters last year didn't go well, but like th- there's a narrative, go- there's a lot of narratives out there of people talking stuff off Morikawa that just it, it just don't make sense. Like they, they, they say he's not a fit for the golf course because his stock shot is a left to right shot. But I mean, he's a professional golfer. I'm pretty sure you can hit a draw right to left shot that fits well at the masters. I mean, you don't win a major, you don't win a WGC, you don't win one of the biggest PJ tour events on the PJ tour schedule. If you can't hit the ball both ways and he's a great iron play, he's a great scrambler. You know, I mean, we saw him overcome his putting issues on really tough, fast greens at the concession a month ago. The guy is a huge ceiling and he's not popular. I mean, that's great for um, that's you know, shocking to me. Yeah, right? that is surprising. I mean, so, not that yeah. I'm super plugged into the golf universe, but I, I mean, I'm plugged in enough. I mean, we are st- the the golf channel over in Slack, again, <laughs> sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash Slack. Sean, it it you don't have to look anywhere else. So if you are looking to, to get involved in golf, like we keep oh, trying yeah. to push it on uh, the Danta base still hasn't bit, but Colby won't bite. Just, just plug in <laughs> right there. I'm shocked that more is not going to be more popular. <laughs> we, so we, we, well, he's, this is, this is Colby's take on golf. When Kramer was talking about, he goes, "You got to get on Brooks." And Kramer, go, and Colby goes, "Well, what's his first name?" <laughs> <laughs> so that's well, listen, Colby's the deal. Good. I didn't like golf either, right? Like, like, uh, listen, I didn't even pick up golf until mm-hmm. my fucking late twenties, uh, because listen, where I grew up, if you played golf, you were a pussy, right? Yes. Basically, right? <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Like, thank you for it. editing like, yourself there. <laughs> um, no, I know what I you th- mean. It's definitely. You know what I mean? If you're if you're a dude in your 30s, start like start what getting else into are we golf. doing? I mean, you yeah. doing you doing like a, 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 what you go and play in like a, a adult league baseball? That's fucking <laughs> weird, man. Don't do that. You know what I mean? Like learn how to play golf. Play golf, and, and dude, it's great. You go sure. out with your buddies, you drink beers, you get competitive. You uh, you think you're gonna be good at it, and you're fucking not. And it, it seriously, if you want to talk about like soft markets and things like that, we talk about this with like weird like 
like <laughs> fuck you, Kramer. The, um, <laughs> I don't like that you can see me now. It's I can't just laugh at you quietly. <laughs> the um, it, it, you talk about like like weird like whatever like Division two college football games that the bookies aren't paying attention to. Well, guess what? The, the matchups that we just crushed this last weekend were because every all the bookies were focused on yeah. match madness, and we were able to take advantage of them hanging shitty numbers and us crushing it based on the data. Man, if you like to gamble, you like money. Yeah. It doesn't matter what fucking sport you gamble on. Like, come gamble like on it. golf. Pound your chest. Pound Let's your, go. I'll say that. Yeah, lots of same reason. You like baseball? I mean, I wouldn't shit on the other rec league sports. We do uh, as an organization, Sports Gambling Podcast Network. We do condone uh, recreational activities. Yes. Uh, I would just say golf is a lot like that. You, it's a, it's I, I to my family it's urban hiking like you go out for a little walk you hit a, you hit the stick a little bit Woo, my second guy <laughs> my, well that, that's that too Kramer likes it. ah come on it's a nice it's nice to be outside with nature next up I, of course I'm taking Brooks mm. are you kidding me I mean if I was gonna I mean we've had a lot of conversations about uh, guys like Tiger Campbell Brooks Kepka is the opposite of that. Brooks Kepka is the guy that I would introduce to my mom. <laughs> Brooks Kepka <laughs> is just an all American guy. 9,200 drip, drip, drip. He's ready. I, I, I think I saw a note that he looked sharp at the driving mm. range. I'll tell you who didn't look sharp. Like, are we drug testing Bryson? Cause it's not just steroids. <laughs> like he looked like a maniac. Like, what is that? I mean, our, our social guy crushing it. The, that, uh, that, that's absolutely the video. Beautiful. Yeah. Make the sure that, 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 that was awesome. That was great. Was awesome. But mm. uh, Bryson's a psychopath and everyone's like, wow, look how imp- VJ was so impressed with him. VJ's looking <laughs> at him. Like this guy's a psychopath. He's looking <laughs> he was, at him. Like, he was scared. Like, which did, is you hard see, to- did you see what VJ tweeted after? No, what did he say? BJ BJ quote tweeted it was like I told him he wasn't swinging hard enough. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to scare another professional golfer by your golf swing, but I think I think he did that. Capper and uh, Steve, where are you guys at with uh, Kramer's? Uh, we kind of talked about a little yeah. bit, but are you okay with yeah. me playing Brooks? Yeah, listen, I'm fine with it, especially in like a GPP, right? And I, like I, I would prefer to bet him. Right, yeah. they put him in my GPP. But listen, I'm fine with it. Like, uh, if, you, if you're playing cash, you're playing three lineups. I would say not do it. But if you're gonna try to win a milli or 200k, like Sean did that one mm. time, yep. uh, the uh, yeah, you want to uh, you want to make sure you, you get somebody who isn't that popular. And Brooks has been catching some steam. Let's take a look here. Let's see where he's at. So I, so he's actually stayed flat since yesterday. He was at like five, and then he jumped up to like ten. Uh, he's still sitting at ten. So I you're lo- fine with that. I mean, it's not chalky. Yeah, I mean, like in the nine thousand dollar range, everybody's going to Cantlay and Spieth. I mean, Spieth yeah. is probably going to be the most popular player in Ever. The game this week. Ever. And there's actually not a lot of ownership on everybody else. So mm. yeah, I mean, listen, like I, I echo what my co-host said. Like in like a cash game or like a three max. Like yeah, I mean, maybe you don't want to go Kepka, but if you're going for the million dollars and the million maker, yeah. It's Brooks freaking Kepka in a major. Go for it. <laughs> Let it run. And, so and paired with and paired with Maury. I mean, yeah, he's that, already got leverage on the field. So let me ask you. So, so Kramer, are you doing the fucking escalate backup bullshit? Uh, like, if you have a ten thousand dollar golf, or did you just skip that no, range I, altogether? I, I, I found the last couple of times I've done this, I've skipped it altogether, and I've the okay, lineup. I just is, want, I just want to make sure as I, as I'm trying to figure yeah, out. No, what, I, what, oh, where I, oh no, oh please, my 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 golfers are always in order. Well, uh, mine. I, I jumped ahead because we wanted to talk about Colin. I do have an Escalade. This guy, oh, there it is. and again, maybe you guys will tell me he's too chalky to consider for DFS. And, and may, I, I don't know. For me, kind of under the radar. He won the Players Championship. He fits the the profile. I I, I think stat wise, why not Justin Thomas? You're paying up for him, but I I, I think he's kind of. The perfect fit for this course for this year, Steve. Am I way off on Justin Thomas? I mean, certainly he's super high priced at ten thousand six hundred dollars, but is he too chalky? What should I be scared of here? So I, I, I think for betting wise, and maybe like narratives and storyline wise, like just of like the general media, yeah, I think he's getting lost in the shuffle because everybody's focused on Bryce and his, you yeah. know, his guns and the and the circus that he's brought to town. Everybody's focused on John Rom. He just had the kid. Everybody's focused on Brooks Kepka. But in the gambling and DFS world, he's not going unnoticed. Mm. He, t- Thomas is probably going to be the most popular player in the ten thousand dollar range. Fucking but, Christ! You know, <laughs> listen, like like a lot of the things that we like about Morikawa, he's a great iron player, great scrambler. Like that's really good with firm greens. And like, this is going to be more of, you know, it's not going to be a bomb show that DJ, you know, 
won, you know, last November. This is going to be more about irons. It's going to be more about like, you know, refinement in your game. And Justin Thomas can do that. And, you know, the one thing about Justin Thomas is when it's really windy, he kind of short circuits a little bit, but you know, it, uh, up until last week, you know, it looked like the wind was going to be a big factor, like 20 mile power winds. It, it, the forecast has changed. Mm. The winds are going to be nearly as tough for him. Mm. It might get a little bit of rain that soften up the forecast a little bit that can, might help him. So yeah, I mean, it, it's popular as, but it's, you know, you got more Kawa in your lineup too, who is not popular. That's might be enough to offset the leverage there. Capter, yeah. Capper, what's your, what's your beef with this pick? If any. I don't have a beef with this pick, uh, but the problem for you, sir, is that I picked him for my one and done. Oh shit! Oh yeah, no. you fucked. You fucked, bro. You yeah, you're fucked. Listen, I, I can pick winners, but I need, I need, I need a revolver worth. Yeah, I, 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 I shoot six, I'll catch it. Right, I shoot one. I, I, listen, I, I haven't been. No, I've been fucking terrible with the one that. But you're right. So, but I don't hate it. Like he should play well here, but Steve's right. Like the tougher course, I equate. Uh, we've talked about this before on the podcast. Like Justin Thomas is the Peyton Manning of golfers, right? He needs to be in a dome, right? Like he I is, like that. He, yeah, he's, he, he is. He needs perfect conditions to be able to perform. Well, as soon as it gets cold outside, his asshole puckers up and Ty law picks it off fucking five times. That's what happens. <laughs> yeah. Right. And actually we can, we can look at the players and there's a direct correlate too. So that first day he didn't do very well. Was he even par? Like it was yeah. really windy. Yeah. And then it, like he was, not really a factor after Friday. And then the weather conditions were perfect Saturday and Sunday. And he shot what, like 65, 65 or something to win it. So yep. play the yeah, cash I register, mean, please. I, Steve's ka-ching. reminding me of my win. Yes. Ka-ching. Yes. That's All right, Kramer, true. what's your, what's your next guy? Well, and I think, uh, I think I stumbled in like he doesn't fit the criteria of winning, but I think I heard them say he was going to not be a, uh, a, a chalky play, maybe even contrarian. My third guy in the nine thousand dollar range, oh Tony gosh. Finau. Mm. Uh, I, you know, another guy who I don't, I don't know if I'm just always gonna remember the moment of him spraining his ankle after he uh, hit the hole in one or whatever the fuck happened at the oh par God. three at yeah, the Masters. Yeah, that thing was brutal. But it makes me think like he's had the most ridiculous thing happen to him already on those grounds, mm. and like mentally, that has to almost prepare you to say, well, it can't be as bad as that time. Cause that was really stupid. That is a big is that, reach. Is that, is that how I, you made I, it through West Hollywood and all those years, Ryan? Yeah, I, a little bit. <laughs> can't, I mean, can't get worse. I, I and I and I think you know on some level again the theme here you got to be mentally strong, and for whatever reason I find it fun to root for this guy. I find it fun to watch Tony Finau play golf, and I, the fact that I was able to squeeze a Kepka Brooks. Tony Fina, Finau, three man weave at the top of my order here. I love, I love this spot. When I finished the lineup, uh, sh- it f- I felt like Dustin Hoffman and uh, Rain Man. I was just like, boom! It just came Perfect. to me like the stars. So Tony Finau, tell me why I'm right. Where <laughs> you want to go? You want me to go? <laughs> so uh, his form coming in is is. I know he not missed the good. cut. He missed the cut. That's fair. It's not even just to miss the cut, <laughs> right? So it's it's um his form in general has not been good. And look, I'm with you, right? Good course history here. His name's top five fucking Tony for a reason, right? Like can't win. Like see, would you say seven years since his win? It doesn't even really count because it was it's fucking Puerto Rico. Five years since Puerto Rico. Yeah, exactly. So it doesn't <laughs> even fucking count. So um yeah, I mean, I really so I was happy for Homer that he won Riviera, but. I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't know what happened. Well, let, let uh, me ask then. I'll make ask a point more pointed question because this is the one get spot that I could have gone two ways. And yeah. I'll ask Steve. The other guy that I was going to play here was Hovland. So it's yeah, either right. Tony that's Finau that's or Hovland. Is that the better play? Yeah. Oh no, Steve. Well, I mean, Steve. I, I mean, honestly, I like both. Ooh. I mean, I know Finau's form hasn't been very good coming in, but we're also not very far removed from him finishing. I think what four straight top fives. Now things change very quickly in golf, but you know, I mean, I, I'm very high on Hovlin. If that's going to save you 400 bucks, where you can use it somewhere else, I'm not using it. I wouldn't use it elsewhere. <laughs> I mean, gun to my head, I'm probably taking Fino over Hovlin just because yeah, Fino has done it before. He has Get a little better out. history at the Masters, and like, I don't know. I mean, like Hovlin's still a young guy, but I do like both. I think Hoblins actually might be slightly more popular than Fino, though, at least as oh. far as where ownership projects. He's already contrarian with his first yeah. two fucking. Picks. I'm trying to win well, this thing, bro. 
You you know how to win a GPP? You go all the way, contrarian. Let's go, Sean. Who you got for your third guy? Well, guy that I'm going uh, fee now. By the way, I'm sticking to it. And again, wrong, wrong I, choice. Because I learned about this guy thanks to the great articles over on sportsgamblingpodcast.com. <laughs> Victor Hovland, Steve yes. likes him as a huh. prop bet, uh, top 10, uh, top 10 finish plus 300. That was good enough for me. He's kind of a young kid out of Norway coming in, playing the game the right way. What a transition. Almost 11 like out of 12 cuts made. Uh, I'm, I'm rocking Victor Hovland for 8,700. Steve, you like him to make top 10. I assume you would like him for DFS as well. Correct. Yeah, I mean, I mean, he's he's a young kid. He hasn't had a top ten in major yet, but like he's only played in four. He was the low amateur in 2019 when you know Tiger won. He shook his hand. Butler cabin. Uh, listen, the guy's been playing great. Finished you know top ten in Riviera. Finished played well. Torrey Pines. Those are two golf courses that tend to have crossover leaderboards. So the fact he played really well at those places, he could definitely play well here. I mean, like, and if you like more Cowie, you gotta like Hovland too. I mean, they're both really efficient tee to green. And it's this is going to be more of a grinding masters, more of a ball striking contest. Hovland is definitely the type of guy you want to be looking for. Capper, yeah. you share the Hovland love? Of course he does. Yes, yes, yeah. I'm 100 percent with you because first of all, he's a fun golfer to bet on and watch because yeah. he'll go, he'll go four straight birdies, double bogey, <laughs> bogey. Eagle, like it's just a roller coaster, and I mean, listen, oh, you, you guys are degenerates too, man. You, you you just like you love the sweat, right? The sweat Hashtag is the fun part of everything. Only. Right? The sweat is the best part. The sweat is the absolute best part, right? Like, I mean, I think we had money on Hovland. <laughs> uh, where the hell was he hitting that fucking three wood chipping off out of the? What, was that concession? That was, yeah, it was concession. Concession. This dude crushed it. Hit it over the green. He's in weird palmetto bushes down here in Florida, and he's taking a three wood out and chipping. Yeah, and it and it lands two feet inside of the fucking. Uh, it, you're it, you're making me it. feel like I got to switch my my. No, they, you to see Hovland how excited they got I just with fucking Hovland. told you that it was the wrong pick. Hovland over feet <laughs> No, I know. I, I yeah, I know. Sean wasn't listening to that part of the show when I asked about Hovland right before he brought no, Hovland I mean, up. But we don't on. have to tell Sean that. But yeah, no, I, I I'm gonna stick with Fino, I think, just to be different. But I like the I like how obviously I almost he almost made it to the drip squad. My next guy, Sean. Yeah, lay it on me. Uh, Mr. Fitzpatrick. I, I mm. have plenty of drip to this point to put that nerdy motherfucker in my lineup. <laughs> I highly recommend you look at his DraftKings picture. Uh, <laughs> looks like he came straight from a swirly, like right, right from the toilet. Uh, but I think I think Fitzpatrick is going to be the chalky first chalky guy I have. Seems that in a lot of my prep, uh, he he kept popping up. So uh, eighty one hundred uh, Fitzpatrick. Again, I think I think he seems to be a very like popular guy in this price range. He fit nicely into the lineup. Of course, I have to start saving money here, playing all those nine thousand dollar very nice cars. Not quite Escalades. going hard. So, uh, Steve, you go first. Is Fitzpatrick the right guy here to start gluing the bottom of my lineup together? You know, I, I, I we we both talked about him a lot on yesterday's DFS show. I I, I think I, I gave a stat to. Boston capper that just really pushes buttons and piques his interest. So there, there's something to, I mean, like he, he looks really young, but this is seventh masters. He has a lot of experience at this place. Ooh. And you know, once you get to seven appearances, there's a little bit of a level jump as your overall performance. So, and he's just hitting that peak and he's playing great. The last four tournaments, like he played great at Arnold Palmer play good at the players championship. Like, I mean, there's a lot of things to like about him. The, the only knock I would say on him is iron play has been all that great, hmm. but he's so good at getting from up and down for par off the greens. And I think with the firm greens, a lot of guys will be missing greens. And it's going to be the, you know, but kind of a scrambling contest and that's going to help him. So yeah, I mean like his popularity has gone up through the week. Like, you know, if you want to, I mean, like Cam Smith is right there and he's got mm. a little bit low ownership, but I, I like Fitzpatrick more than Cam Smith. So yeah, I mean, even with the popularity, you're contrarian enough up top. I think it's fine. Yeah. It's not like it's 20% with Fitzpatrick. Uh, I mean, shit, I bet him outright. Like I already bet him outright. What is he? 50 to one. We grabbed that. You grabbed them. You grabbed them too, right? Steve. Yeah. Oh. I, a month ago I got him 80 to one. Oh, wow. that is a, that's a big dog. <laughs> Another uh, another young guy I got in my DFS lineup again. Learned about him via via Will. 
or sorry, his name is Will. Will Jesus Zalatoris. 70- John can't keep track of the young guys he likes. <laughs> that's that's what happens. I, there's so many there's so many young studs in my stable. Zalatoris only seventy three hundred dollars. Kind of a new kid on the block. Again, Steve seemed to like him for a best newcomer. As far as he's playing in his first Masters, he does have five top ten finishes. Again, rolling the dice here a little bit, but seventy three hundred dollars. Am I? Am I crazy uh, to go dumpster diving here, Capper? What, what's your take on Zalatoris? Oh, first of all, anything above seven thousand dollars is not dumpster diving, sir. <laughs> okay, uh, and no, absolutely not. Uh, he's he's definitely going to be a popular pick. Um, the guy is a, a a a premier ball striker, right? He's really good with his irons. Um, he was a stud on the corn ferry. He should already have his card uh, because of COVID. It kind of fucked him. Um, I mean, look, he's, he's definitely popular in this range. Uh, me and Steve have a tendency to fade these guys, but he's nowhere near like, you know, whatever the 20% for Paul Casey. And I mean, if you look at the guys around him at 7,300, I mean, look at it. What Harris English, Justin Rose, who might not even play. Yeah, man. I mean, listen, I, I'm full, I'm fully on board with uh, Will Z. Uh, I I didn't take him top deb- debutante, uh, not newcomer, Sean. Uh, oh, okay. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, listen, I, I like Will Z, man. He's a really good player. Oh, I'm sorry. What, what just happened? What did I? Just, th- or is that say that word again, Cap? Top de- <laughs> debutante. W- what does that mean? <laughs> it means the the first time they're there. Oh, yeah, they no, debut. He, 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 got, he got that debut. Right. Oh my yes. goodness. <laughs> I it's just, it a just baby sounded funny. Fucking wheel, man. That's very. That feels like you're a word you the, shouldn't be allowed to you're, use. You're thinking yeah. of like those debutante dances, and you're coming up with a weird association. Well, it's, the same, it's the same thing. But yeah, it yeah, is, yeah. It's, it's the same thing. I'm getting with, aroused. With the, creepy, with the creepy dads would bring their fucking sixteen-year-old daughters out and be like, "Present my debutante." Like, it is uh, funny oh, to think of, of doing that with Will Zalatoris at the Masters. Uh, I think that's what was. Uh, I think uh, that's what was going on in Kramer's uh, brain. No, well, now I'm thinking of what's that movie with Liam Neeson where the daughter gets kidnapped. That's what I'm thinking. Uh, Isn't that everything? Uh, they're, they're just taken. Taken, yeah. Will's getting brought out in the, the big fishbowl. Ah, <laughs> uh, he's fresh. Steve, first time. Thoughts on uh, Zalatoris? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, piggyback on what he said. I mean, he is a premier ball striker. He's the best ball striker in this range. I mean, well, mm. I mean, next to Sergio, he's, he's the best one. But I mean, his numbers rival Morikawa's ball striking, Justin Thomas's ball striking. He's great. And, and uh, even though he's a newcomer, he's battle tested. Like he's been to a lot of golf courses in his young professional career in the PG tour that where guys who typically have good course history, there play well. And you want to fade guys who either have no history or bad history. And he's on great. All of them. Like, I mean, he showed up to the U S open finished top 10. He's been to a couple other places like Torrey pines, Bay Hill, TBC sawgrass, where guys who tend to have more better course history or more experience do better. And he finished great there too. So I don't have any reason to think that he won't show up to Augusta national, the golf course where you is the most important to have good course history. And I think you can do great there. And it's $7,300. Like you don't need a top five. Like if he yeah. finishes 14th or 15th, you're perfectly fine. It's a perfectly acceptable, especially with the guys around there. So yeah, I mean, I, I love the pick Kramer. What do you got? Well, uh, and this, I got to go to capper first because I just want to hear yeah. him say his last name. Uh, Max, Max Hama, seventy one hundred. I, 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 why is this? All right, so why is he so cheap? Is it just because it, the youth thing and the fact that I, I'm, I'm, guessing, al, I'm also on Max Hama, so you okay. guys can grade seventy one hundred. It's first of all, it's Homa, guys. Okay. Homa, mm-hmm. Homa, <laughs> Homa. 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 I mean, he won. Homa. He won. Homa. The, he won the. He won the Genesis. It's a family show, Capper. Relax. <laughs> Invitational, which again, I, I was kind of looking at guys who've won in the past year and. Uh, Max Homa uh, jumped out at me. Are, are we crazy? Homa, I say Homa. Are we crazy? Seventy one hundred feels really low for this guy. It, it, it does, right? And so the reason he's low, he's only played here once, right? He missed the cut, um, but I kind of feel like he's coming to a different point, right? He won Riviera, super tough golf course. Um, uh, Steve uh, will tell you it's a comp course. Uh, yeah, I mean, look, the guy's good, man. Like he's a really good young player. Uh, he's he should get more ownership than he does. Uh, the problem is, this is the masters and you do have to take course history into it. And Steve has a thing. It's almost like the third year wide receiver for fantasy, right? Mm. Like you have a third, third year, uh, a third time plan, a seven time plan. And fuck, I fucked this last one up all the time. Is it 12, Steve? Uh, nine. It's nine, nine, nine. Right. And, and, and so he's only played here once and it was 
course conditions that aren't going to be anywhere near what they are now. Uh, but he is a different player. Listen, I don't fucking hate it. I, I don't hate it at all. I, I have, I think I have him up for a top 20 in the top 10. Um, yeah, I don't hate nice. it. Nice. Yeah, I, I don't Capper? love it. I don't hate it. Capper, where are you at? Or sorry, uh, Steve, where are you at on on Homa? Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of things that are right. Like, I mean, his last four terms, he's gained about a stroke per round tee to green. He won the Riviera. That is a comp course. Like, guys like Bubba Watson won a lot at Riviera. He's won the Masters. Phil has won a lot at Riviera. He won the Masters. Adam Scott, Dustin Johnson, all these master winners have won a Riviera and then gone and have great careers at Augusta. And now he fits that narrative. And he is a different player. Like, he, he went through a little bit of a tough time with his career and, you know, he lost his car, gained it back. You know, but you know, he's, he's Ryan high. He's a really talented player. He won the NCAAs back in as an, as an amateur. Like it's not just a flash of the pan. Like he's a legitimately good player and he's just starting to finally come to his own. So he is getting a little bit of popularity. You know, he's starting to get a little bit of that push, but you know what? I mean, you know, he's a good player and I, I can't really hate on the pick. Well, yeah, Matt, Max Homa it. also a local kid. Drip. He is from Burbank, California, Drip. where you and I were uh, roommates wow, way the, back in the day. Shared a house in Burbank. That was the part of the origin story, Sean. <laughs> exactly. Did you guys? Did you guys? Did you guys have young boys in the stable then as well? <laughs> no. We did. We did. Well, it was the equestrian district. So, yeah. um, <laughs> last last pick, Kramer. What are you no, doing? There's anything wrong with that? Like, no, no, of course absolutely. not. Absolutely. Uh, <laughs> Look, uh, sixty-eight hundred for Matt Kuchar. Are you kidding me? Are you fucking <laughs> kidding me? That forehead, I get to. Uh, he's making the cut. You know, he's making the cut. He seems to be playing pretty well too. Which I, I feel like typically, once you're in six thousands, it's got all guys that just are playing like complete shit. And Not so, this week. And, and so, yeah, perhaps you're right, Capper. Uh, so, Matt, yeah, Matt Kuchar for sixty. I only had sixty-nine hundred yet, which was fitting. Nice, uh, but uh, sixty-eight hundred for Matt Kuchar. Uh, you know, again, I'm I'm kind of grabbing at a name that I can trust here. I feel like he's perform he he knows how to perform in a top twenty sense at the Masters. So Matt Kuchar, sixty eight hundred. Steve. Yeah, I mean, he is playing a little better. Like he was struggling since the COVID break, and but something just turned on the last like couple of tournaments. I mean, he played well in match play, you know, and then he followed that up with a really good performance at TPC San Antonio, and he's kind of been crediting like you know a little bit of a turnaround with his game lately. And he doesn't seem to be as popular as what you would think. Like it's mm. there's a lot of name recognition, in Matt Kuchar, and and maybe like. You know, some of these ownership projections aren't factoring in like the general public will just flock to him. But just as far as like in the no DFS community, like you use all these stat databases, you know, everyone's going up a hundred dollars more to Jason Kokrak and Corey Connors because yep. they're just ball striking gods. And Matt Kuchar doesn't show up on the, you know, and he doesn't pop there. But I mean, they're, they're missing on a little bit of context. The fact that he is, seems like he's back, you know, he's got great course history at Augusta. It seems like how this term is probably going to go with the weather and the course conditions. It fits his strengths as far as like, you know, just solid consistency getting up and down for par, you know, maybe drain some putts. You know, it, it's not going to be a birdie fest where maybe like he can't really, you know, do it as well as he used to. Yeah. I, I, I think Kuchar is fine, especially if his hmm. ownership is as low as what people are thinking. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I, I'm a, uh, listen, I love Kuch. Uh, uh, we talked about this uh, on, on the previous podcast. He was the cockroach that wouldn't fucking die at match play. Like he's just <laughs> like he really wouldn't. Like he was just smoking guys he shouldn't have smoked, ruined bad stuff. I finally ended up having to bet him and whatever. It is what it is. Like he, he has found something. We like he had he had talked about going back with his coach and trying to figure something out. And he's back to the old coach. He's not gonna win, right? Uh, but listen, I got a top ten on him. I got a top twenty on him. Like I I fucking cool. love Cooch here. And so yeah, sometimes you just need a little of that cooch to get things squared away. Maybe you're That's back. Right. Maybe you're backed up. Who knows? You know, sometimes uh, sometimes the ladies the come. ladies got to get to business just because you know it's been a long week. My gotta final make sure the pipes are working. My final uh, Masters DFS play, <laughs> and uh, this is co-signed. We have uh, a couple other guys who do some golf stuff. Matt T. John Cobos over at sports or maybe Cabos, I don't know. Over at sportsgamblingpodcast.com, they threw this guy out. I was also keeping my eye on him again kind of going through Steve's uh, formula of did guys win recently. He won the American Express, top 10 finish at the Shriners and the Players wow. Championship. Give me Siwoo Kim for a bargain <laughs> price of $6700. Sean loves to dip his toe in the uh, <laughs> the Asian market. Well, you know, the, the, hey, Asians, Siwoo. young boys, all these things are coming together, Sean. Siwoo Kim, 
He fits the model. He fits the numbers. Yeah. Steve, am I am I right to be investing in Siwoo Kim at sixty seven hundred? I mean, listen. I think I need to pass this off to my co-host because he yes. needs to get hosed down every time we bring on Siwoo Kim. So you know, Boston Capper, take it away. Gush about your boy. You're a hundred percent fucking right, Sean. This dude is one of the best iron players in the goddamn world, and he is disrespected at this numbers. I have him an outright top ten, top twenty, top Asian. Like this. Listen, he's, he's it's a roller coaster, right? As far as when you bet him, but it's it, it, the fact that he's priced down here is absolutely ridiculous. Who is priced above him? Like the fact that Matt Wolf, the guy who literally can't keep the ball on the fucking planet is $7,100 oh. and we're, <laughs> we're, and we're getting Siwoo Kim at 6,700 Kevin Kisner, the short knocker who admittedly knows that he cannot win here or any other long course. Dude, Siwoo is not especially long off the team, but he's not short. And he seriously, when he gets dialed in, he is sticking it to three feet every time. So it doesn't matter if he can putt or not, because he's going to get in there. $6,700 Siwoo Kim is the best pick of either of your lineup. Oh, yeah. yes. can, I, can, I, can, I, can I a couple other things yeah. to think about? So yeah, I mean, like he, he hit a little bit of a rocky patch since he won, but like in the last couple of turns, he has turned around. And I, I, I do want to say too that I think I recall that when we I first started coming on this podcast, Sean's I think his last pick of his original DFS lineup when he did this was C Woo Kim, and he did pretty well for him at the Masters mm. there too. So oh, you know wow. what? You know wow. he's got some good luck charm with him. I think he should continue to ride C Woo Kim with it. Love it. Right. 150 to one. If you want 150 to, to one. Well, and yeah, uh, 150 to one, and we actually hit C Woo. Uh, what, what did we get him at? We got him at 80. Oh, we got him like 80 to one. At the 80 to one. Wow. That was a family yeah. dinner too. Like everybody yeah, on the Slack dinner. channel was just fucking. That was up. Dude, lit up. My man Mudoff sent me that uh, 21 year fucking red breast. <laughs> I enjoyed on St. Patty's day. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to throw out, uh, I'm going to throw out a couple outrights. I like in top tens, and then we'll get some DJ props from capper and Steve. And of course, Kramer, <laughs> feel free to throw out your outrights top tens. Again, Not Jordan, like fading Jordan speed. This week. <laughs> maybe, maybe go against speed in the outrights, but the, the so guys sad. we just hit on in DFS, I'm playing outright. Okay. Justin Thomas, <laughs> Nine at plus nine hundred. Siwoo Kim at one hundred and fifty to one, and Max Homa at one hundred and fifty to one. For my two top ten bets, I'm taking Hovland a uh, top ten wow. and Homa top ten. <laughs> Hovland, right. Homa. Hovland, Hovland's plus three hundred. I don't know. I don't have the Homa top ten so price in front look, of me. Look, Brooks is twenty eight to one, and Morikawa is third. I'm I'm seeing thirty two to one. Oh, uh, where are you finding thirty two? Uh, I grabbed him at thirty, and it dropped down to like twenty-seven. It's, it's between like thirty and thirty-three on most books now. And so, and so yeah. what, what what makes me like that feels, you know, brings me back. Sorry, Sean, and the, and throwing Colin Morikawa, <laughs> the to <laughs> thirty-two to one to the Come first on. time. That's the blackjack live 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 <laughs> to the live shot right there. Yeah, I mean, bets, Sean, was, Sean was the original golf tout when he had Morikawa with the PGA. Yeah, so Come yeah, on. of course he has to go back to Morikawa. I got I got to get Steve, a little taste. Let me let me tell you something about a professional golf tout. <laughs> all right, two thousand twelve, the first year we cover the Masters. Oh yes, Bubba. Watson, twenty-five to one. Let's fucking go. I've always thought oh I've always God. liked the twenty-five to forty to one range. Feels like that's where you find the winners and get paid. Yeah, I'm gonna go those two guys. Can I just give out two two sure. outrights? Is that is yeah. that okay? Yeah. And yeah, then I would say fade. I'm going to be fading Jordan Spieth where it makes sense, aka with everyone. <laughs> I I want to fade Jordan Spieth. I, I just I see that he's back and it's just like, oh. But now he's going to the course that can mind fuck you, right? He he just he just put one level one of Tetris, and now he thinks he's going to go defeat Bowser. All right. Well, he has he has defeated Bowser before, but he also has a very yeah. terrible memory of level twelve. I, I uh, just do you but all right. So let's look real quick. <laughs> is is Speeth back? And this no, Speeth's not back, is he? Speeth just fucking won. What do you mean? I know of he's back. Yeah, he's back. <laughs> Hold he's on. back. And here's the deal. I'm very fucking biased. Okay. I have a 51 fucking ticket on speed. Okay. All right. right. Do you want the unbiased opinion? Yeah. Let him him talk. All right. So (laughs) the problem with speed over the last year and a half is like, yes, he's, he was squirrely off the team, but the, the biggest issue was his iron play was just awful. Like, I mean, that was really what was carrying him. Like that's his biggest strength. Go back to 2015, 2017 was when all the majors that's now back. Like the, the, the numbers he's putting up with his irons are as good as more cow as good as Justin Thomas. Like, mm. and this is now like, 
a two month pattern where that started at Phoenix and then he played well at Pebble beach. Yeah. I mean, like he's playing great now, as far as betting wise, like you missed the boat, like th- that 50 to one number that, you know, that Willie Wonka golden ticket that my co-host is on right now mm. with him Sounds no longer nice. out there. Yeah. yeah. It, it, listen, it, it's great. Nice like before he fucking won last week. So, <laughs> I mean, if, if you want to try and make money off speed, like look at matchup plays like against him, like I, I'm betting speed plus plus one twenty over Bryson. I don't like Bryson at Ooh. all this week. I, I I'm totally out on him. And nice. the fact that I'm getting plus odds on speed with that, I'm, I'm doing it. So yeah, I mean, at this point, if, if you want to get a little shares of speed, probably the matchup get mark is the way to go. I was going to, I just, he's, he's a Cowboys fan. I was so really hoping to lead into that uh, <laughs> first round leader, Sean Sergio Garcia, 50 Ooh, to one. Okay. Uh, Matt, right. Matt Kuchar, 70 to one. And then the last one I'm going to give out top, a, a, a top 20. On my guy, I'm double dipping with Morikawa. Top twenty is uh, even money. Oh, okay. So. I like that. I, I like throwing a little and, even money action. And I'm there. I'm gonna be in the slack, just following what everyone else is telling me to bet. <laughs> I want a lot of action. This, uh, we're playing golf on Friday, so there's yep. gonna be golf and bars betting. get installed in the studio. It's, it's oh gonna be a goodness. great hashtag Digins only Masters weekend. Before we let you go, guys, of course, make sure you subscribe to the Golf Gambling Podcast. Send in that screenshot of your review over at sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash masters. Sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash masters. That'll get you the sign up link for the free the five hundred dollar free for all. I didn't hear how much? How much did it cost to play? Completely free, Kramer. <laughs> Completely free. And, and free. what's the prize? Five hundred dollars. How, how do they do that? That's that's an infinite <laughs> overlay, Sean. That's an a huge overlay, overlay opportunity. And uh there's not a ton of people in the contest left. So Good opportunity uh, to make some free cash. Like, yeah, just throw out, throw out some darts here. Not, not to be a dick, but fuck you, it's free. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> what more That's do you want? Takes I two literally seconds. said that during ad read tonight. I'm sorry, Sean. <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> the, the advertisers love when uh, some drunk guy from Boston screams "fuck" in their Listen, reads. Man, I'm not a fucking drunk guy from Boston. Okay, I'm a buzz. He's trying to calm uh, down. He's, like, he's a oh. buzz guy in Florida. Well, I gotta yeah, hear what exactly. The, the, we're, I assume, we're workshopping on a replacement for uh, the F word for oh, him. Yeah, I we'll, like we'll give it some time, right? <laughs> uh, only because hey, you know, Kramer, you fucked me with it because you said don't say fuck so oh, much, I, <laughs> and now I think about it all the time when I fucking say it. And You're right. This isn't mine. This is your podcast. It's my Thank bad. you for participating in the sports gambling podcast. <laughs> well, I, I had to get our shit going. We man. can't let are them we, leave. Are, are we gonna get fired? <laughs> we can't. We can't let them leave without without a yes. A DJ, bet, DJ right? and prop bet. Steve, I'll let you go first. What do you got for us? Any sort of a uh, wild? I know. I know. We always like to take Tiger not to make the cut, or he's not obviously there. not for the <laughs> Masters, but <clears throat> well, <laughs> he's. Uh, He's definitely not making the maybe cut Tiger year. to make the cut is the real D Gen only uh, <laughs> prop bet. Rest in peace. What do you what do you got for us, Cap or uh, Steve? All right. Well, I mean, I, I think you gotta be a true degenerate <laughs> if you are betting low senior golfer yes. at the Masters. So, I mean, it's, it's there's a couple guy or there, well, there's one guy I really like. So, you know, up at the top of the car, I mean, you got Phil Mickelson, which is kind mm. of sticker shock. The fact that he's now a senior citizen at this event. And he's like minus 120 or something. You got Bernhard Long or you got Fred Couples up there. And then you got a bunch of guys over 10 to 1 that probably aren't making the cut. So this is a three horse race. You know, I Bernhard Longer, like he hits it probably about 220 off the tee, but he hits it on a rail. And without firm the fairways are going to be, that ball is going to roll about 30, 40 yards. He's going to have pretty short approach shots into the greens. Still can hit his irons pretty well. And this isn't going to be a tournament that is a birdie fest and they can get away from. He can just grind out pars and you know stay up there. So he's four to one. This is the type mm. of conditions that he's tended to play well at his advanced age in the last few years. Yeah, I think he can be the low senior citizen at this event. So Bernhard Longer, low senior, plus four hundred. Oh, I like that. He's also fun. he's German, correct? Yes, he is. Yeah, that means he can finish the tournament. He's got whatever, <laughs> like whatever stuff they got cooked up. Because that, I mean, we also we we talk about this. Uh, we like the Freddie Couples first round leader angle because oh, we yeah. know his ass oh, isn't is, is, is getting the. It's but, always fun. He he made a run. <laughs> Three hundred and fifty to one, guys. Come his, on, his back's not making it through the whole tournament. That's why the first round leader. Uh, I well, like. And, and oh, we I'm, didn't. I'm and actually, that. yeah, we didn't we didn't talk first round leader. Uh, Steve, do you have any, any first round leader bets you like? Well, I mean, so, so I have a lean, so it looks like on Thursday that anyone going off in the morning 
it's probably going to have the advantage. Like the winds aren't going to be as strong. The winds are going to probably get about 10, 15 miles per hour in the afternoon. So I think the first round leader is probably going to come out of the morning. So mm. there's a lot of good guys down in that range. Like, and usually you get one of the favorites as like a leader. So, you know, take your pick down there. There's a couple sleeper guys who are going off the AM, like Matt Jones, Siwoo Kim, Siwoo. you know, there, there's a couple guys Ooh. down there who can definitely get hot. Um, in the morning and post a number. So yeah, I, I would probably target guys going off in the morning on Thursday for your first round leader bets. And, and yeah. um, shout out to Moonoff. He's always on the first <laughs> round leader bets. And uh, <laughs> he, he maybe, maybe we'll get him to post one on Riffer. We're also on Riffer now. What's can, Riffer? I'd uh, say great question. You can go to sports gambling podcast.com slash Riffer R I F F R putting out a uh, little mini audio pods. They're, they're only uh Micro pods, micro pods, they call them under three minutes. And we're putting out a bunch of little, uh, little free picks over there. So give us a follow on that sports gambling podcast.com slash riffer. I know uh mood gave out some NBA props. He just hit on, Coaching. of course, gave out some, some nice March madness picks. As you know, mm. Capper, what's a, what's a DJ and prop bet you like, and maybe a first round leader as well. Uh, I was just thrown off by this riffer thing. Uh, the, uh, <laughs> so <laughs> wait, are they a sponsor? Yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> moving right along. The um, <laughs> our sports gambling podcast dot com slash R I F F R. All right. So, sounds great. Short extension span, millennials. I get it. Makes sense. Can't listen to you know ten minutes of talk. I get it. So <laughs> two hours no of way. golf. No way. <laughs> <laughs> no way. Zero chance. I even know we go long. Who gives a fuck? The um. All right. So I guess. I don't know for uh, so not a DJ bet, but let's give out one for everybody if they're not going to come over and listen to our podcast. This is one that uh, me and Steve were on last year, uh, and we got screwed because there was no <laughs> fans there, and they didn't place it normally. Round four, hole in one, plus one fifty. They always put it in the bowl, and they didn't do it last year. <laughs> and this year we're going to get some fans back. Uh, round four, hole in one, plus one fifty. It's not really like a degen bet, so well, I well real quick, what's what does the uh, fan impact have on that bet? So basically, what happened last year was, I mean, the traditional Sunday pin placement at sixteen. It, it's you know, you get all the excitement. Everybody knows how to play. You basically. P- you know, hit a fade to the little ridge there and the ball funnels towards the hole. That's why I see a lot of aces and like it's, it gets the crowd like excited. You hear the roars reverberate through the golf course. The fact that the fans weren't there, you know, they didn't want to put it there. And I I also heard like there was something with the greens that they couldn't actually put in that pin placement either just because the grass wasn't growing. So they're going to put it there this year. If there's going to be a hole in one at the golf course, it's probably going to be Sunday in round four and 16. I mean, the last time there was a hole in one on anywhere else besides Sunday on the, at 16 was back in 2013. You know, some books offer like you can get a hole in one on, you know, round one, round two, or, you know, just hole 16. The best odds they've been putting out is hole in one round four. It's around like plus 150. And honestly, it's just a fun prop to be on. Yeah, like anytime is. they flash, anytime they flash the Vern Lundquist, like, you know, this <laughs> random scrub golfer on 16, you get excited if you're on yes. And let me tell you, I've been on no on that prop and it's excruciating. Oh, that's like brutal. every time they flash to it, it's no <laughs> fun. Like, oh no, my God. Gonna hit it. Going. And then it, the ball starts going, going. You're like, please miss. And then when it goes in, it just, it's a feed. But when you're on yes, Oh, it's great. Even when it misses, it just gives you like the rush and the energy. So yeah, just bet. Yes. You're going to have fun with it. Like, you know, just go nuts. It's awesome. And and I'm I, like, I'm seeing on sports books, by the way, they top debutant. I love that. Yes. Yeah. Uh, who knew you learned I'm not something that classy. You I learn something from, new obviously. every day, Kramer. Well, I also learned that this guy named Joe long <laughs> <laughs> debuting in the masters this year, 28 to one. All right, guys, that was awesome. Thanks as, as always for uh, calling into the uh, podcast. Thank you for participating in the sports gambling podcast. Make sure you check out the golf gambling podcast, subscribe and uh, get that review in and uh, send that in sports gambling podcast.com slash masters for your chance to win $500 completely free. That's right. Completely free. Any, uh, any closing picks f- cap or Steve, anything else, any, any parting words here on the masters. Oh. I know, Capper, you want to go first? You want me to go first? <laughs> Is he still with us? Y- you All go. Right, well, I'll go first then. What um, Capper died? He, he lost. We lost him. All right. All right, Pete. So I, I, I guess, it, you know, at this point, if you haven't put any outrights down, a lot of things have been bet down. So, like, 
you know, guys like Patrick Cantley. Like I got him in a better number about a month ago. He's down to like 20 to one. So, but if you're looking at these hours, there, there's some crooked numbers out there that just don't make sense. Like the Morikawa number is like 30 to one. Doesn't make sense. The Brooks number, like he's 25 to one. I know there's the knee injury issues, but he's got a ceiling. Like even like a guy like Terrell Hatton, who doesn't have a great course history at the masters right now. There's not a lot of steam on him. There's a lot of hate, but he's won three times in the last year up until about a month ago, everybody was dying to play him. And now it'd be like the steam is completely off and he's down to 50 to one like that. He's the number eight player in the world. It's a bad number. So like, even it, like it just close your eyes, like try to find players like that, that just have numbers that just don't make sense that do have high upside. And you know, who knows? It's the masters. Anything can happen. And maybe you're holding a long shot. Like, you know, like a Danny Willett, like that strategy worked back in 2016. Danny Willett had a 50 to one number that just didn't make sense based on his form, who he was and his world ranking. Terrell hands kind of the same place this week. So, you know, look for guys like that. Look for opportunities where the book is napping because you're right. Some of these books aren't as sophisticated with setting their odds. You know, maybe you can catch a good number and, you know, get a big score. Love it. All right. Steve, appreciate it. Thank you as always. And uh, give Boston Capper a follow on Twitter <laughs> at Boston underscore Capper. Hop into our Slack channel. I know Steve's oh. going to be going crazy with the uh, information analysis. That's no bullshit. If you're going to bet the tourney, you, you like, owe it to yourself. Like, I see people with their, their, their one cheaters, their cheat sheet. Like, their Twitter list. Like you don't need any of that. No. Just hop into Slack, hop into Slack, join the, uh, join the golf channel and enjoy the ride yes. for the sports gambling podcast. I'm Sean stacking the money green and he is Ryan. Let's go Brooks Kramer. Let it ride.